You want to do the honors, Chevelle? Come on, you'll be the one to greet. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Oh, now that I was the one who greeted you. <laughs> oh, boy, Chevelle was getting ahead of me. Trying to greet everybody. Well, good morning. Today is a very nice day, a very nice feast uh, in the church. Uh, September 8, 2020. It's a Tuesday. And it is the birthday of Our Lady. Our Lady. Oh, and your first. Oh, the anniversary of your first communion. Okay, very good, Chevelle. So how many years have you been taking our Lord now? One year. So today is the first year anniversary of Chevelle's first communion. Very good. Congratulations. Congratulations. Okay, and this is also going to be very memorable because... Uh, Within your first year anniversary, we got hit by this pandemic. So you know, now you will uh, remember how you have been deprived of uh, receiving our Lord also uh, every day the way we used to. Okay, so so today is the birthday of Our Lady. Okay, um, who can guess how old Our Lady is today if she were uh, on earth with us? 2034. Huh? 2034. Okay, Jacob wagers a, a guess 2034 years old. Very, very difficult to imagine. Very difficult to imagine. But in the case of Our Lady, it's, it's very much a birthday. Okay, very much a birthday. So, 2034 years old. Well, maybe, yeah, right about there. So, in today's Mass, the Feast of Our Lady's birthday, we have two Gospels. Two Gospels that, that the priest can choose from. Okay, And they're both long narrations, so I will skip having to read them. But it's interesting for us to understand these two different Gospels. The first choice is a reading uh, about the genealogy of Jesus. Okay, uh, Taken from, let's see, whose Gospel is this? That they, taken from St. Matthew. Okay, And it starts with, you know, giving out... The long, long list of our, of our Lord's uh, ancestry, beginning from, the, uh, from Abraham. Abraham became the father of Isaac. Isaac became the father of Jacob. You know, remember that, remember that very, very long listing of the uh, uh, ancestry of our Lord, right? And then it ends with his birth, okay? that he being the son of Joseph and the son of Mary. Okay? The other choice of a gospel is the actual narration of our Lord's birth in Bethlehem, beginning from the Annunciation, and then Joseph betrothed to, to uh, Our Lady, and, and Joseph uh, wanting to put her away uh, so as not to embarrass her, okay? and all of those things until his birth in Bethlehem. Okay, so question: Why? Is it that on the birthday of Our Lady, we read about the birth of Jesus? Because that's why she was born. What is that? Because that's why she was. Sorry, Sophia. That's why. That's because. Because that's why she was born. Okay, perfect answer, and the correct answer from Sophia. The reason why on the feast of Our Lady. We have the readings about the birth of Jesus is because being the mother of God is the reason why Mary was born. Right? The very reason for Our Lady's creation and eventual birth into this world 
on the 8th of September, or right about that same date, is because she was to be the mother of God. And remember how this has already been foretold even from Genesis. I will put enmity between you and a woman. Right? He was telling Satan. Even from the very beginning of time, the birth of this woman was already foretold by the Creator. And all throughout the different other passages of the Old Testament, you will see Mary being prefigured by other women, by other uh, metaphors in the Old Testament. Until the Virgin was born into this world. And not even her own parents, St. Anne and St. Joachim, knew that this girl that they had brought into the world was going to be the mother of God. See, that's the reason why on the birthday of Our Lady, we have these two Gospels to choose from. Because the birth of Jesus is intimately connected to the vocation of Our Lady. Okay? So her birthday and its connection to the birth of our Lord is to us a confirmation of her vocation in this world. A vocation is a calling from God. It's a calling from God to fulfill a certain role of service to Him in this world. So that's that's the that is the the nature of a vocation. It's God calling us to serve him in a very specific manner in this life on earth. And it is really up to us to accept or not that calling of our Lord. He he allows us the freedom eh, to either accept the call or reject it. So, and Our Lady here on her birthday is telling us also, or is giving us uh, the notion that all of us were born with a vocation, a, a potential calling that we need to answer to in our lives. Okay? That's also the, the, the whole, uh, the whole uh, lesson we gather from Our Lady's birthday and, and the readings today. That our own birth in this world is associated with, is connected with a vocation, a calling. Okay? And that, that calling and that vocation, if we answer it generously, respond to it generously, like Our Lady did in the Annunciation, when she was told that this was going to be her mission in life, she was going to be the mother of God, she said, fiat. Fiat, let it be done okay? according to your word, according to the angel's word. That annunciation, that fiat, was just so-called the, the acceptance speech right? of Our Lady. Acceptance speech because, you know, these days we're in an election year and uh, acceptance speech is, is in my head. I've been watching several acceptance speeches for nominations. So... <laughs> Uh, that was like the acceptance speech of Our Lady to the angel Gabriel, who brought to her uh, to, to her attention any, uh, the invitation that our Lord was issuing to her to be the mother of God. And she freely, willfully accepted that call. And from then on, responded with great generosity to that vocation. Okay? So let's keep that in mind. Um, we all have a vocation also in life that we need to fulfill, that God is asking us and will be asking us to fulfill. Okay? That can be a vocation to marriage. That may be a vocation to the religious life. That may be a vocation to the clerical life. That may be a vocation to being single, uh, that may be, you know, a vocation somewhere. But there's always a vocation attached to each and every life that God has created on earth. 
it is our task right to to try to discern that as we are growing up as we are uh, keeping up that relationship of prayer and devotion with God we have to be asking him constantly what is it you want from me in life okay? what is it that you might be asking from me to to serve you in in life in what manner what nature what form do you want me to serve you in life and of course work our everyday work is very much part of that vocation okay? So yesterday, we celebrated Labor Day here in the United States. It is a reminder about the, the uh, sanctity of work and how work is an instrument not only for us to, um, you know, make money okay, or provide for our families or create uh, products and services. Okay? On top of all of that, yesterday's feast of Labor Day is also a reminder to us that work is an avenue for sanctification. That work is and could and should transform us into saints. That through our work, we can seek sanctity and fulfill the vocation that God has called us to fulfill on earth. That our human work, our human labor is all part of of that vocational calling. Okay? Because remember how, how I define vocation, right? It's a calling to serve God in one way or another here on earth. It's a calling to service. And service means work. Right? Service means to render some kind of work that would contribute to Establishing the kingdom of God on earth. And that, that kind of work is your path. Your portion of the calling you are fulfilling. In order to fulfill the reason for your existence on earth. So it's very nice that uh, today's feast of Our Lady uh, dovetails with uh, yesterday's uh, 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 national celebration of Labor Day. Right? Because for us, right now, ordinary people in the middle of the world, our vocation, our calling is to work. Like you, students, your vocation right now is to be a student, okay? a student who will study very well in preparation for whatever it is God might be asking you when you grow up. Right? When you, when you uh, all of a sudden answer that call uh, uh, for, for the kind of life in, of service that God is calling you in this world, you need to be preparing for that. And this time of study is our preparation. Okay? And that is why this that you are doing, studying, forming yourselves, okay, this is your vocation right now. It is to be good students. And also, of course, at the same time, good children and good members of the family and good children of God overall. See, these are all part of your vocational calling. See? That's why it's nice that the, these two celebrations uh, come one after the other. Okay, so, since it's Our Lady's birthday, and now we understand how connected her own birth is to her vocation and that in the life of Jesus, see, that she was to be the mother of God. The question we could ask ourselves today, I think, is what gift are we going to give to Our Lady? It's her birthday. And if we treat her as our mother, as we should, because Jesus gave her to us too as our mother. Remember when he hung on the cross, he told St. John, who represented all of us, John, behold your mother. Okay? Behold your mother. Mother, behold your son. Our Lord gave the rest of all of us, the rest of us, to Our Lady for her to be our mother too. He shared His own mother with us. And so today on her birthday, the question I'd like to ask is, what gift are you going to give to Our Lady, to our mother? Hmm? If you haven't yet thought of a gift 
that you can offer to Our Lady, I'd like to suggest a few things. Okay? Number one is related to her favorite prayer. Okay? The rosary. Right? We, watch, we just watched Fatima. The, the, oh, God bless you. The new Fatima film uh, last weekend. Right? And what did Our Lady always tell the three children? Pray. Pray the rosary. Pray the rosary for the, for the forgiveness of sins. Pray the rosary. So today, perhaps as a gift to Our Lady, maybe we can pray the rosary extra well. Maybe we can pray the rosary with much more attention, with much, much more devotion, with much more love, really meaning what we say in the Hail Marys and all the prayers that we recite. Okay? Let us not try to pray the rosary like... Uh, like, you know, like we're, we're, we're just mumbling words one after the other and stringing them together in a, in a kind of uh, train wreck, right? Where you don't even understand what you are saying. So that's not the spirit of the rosary. Uh, the rosary is supposed to be uh, like, like rosebuds right? that we offer to Our Lady. Every bead, every bead is like a rose. That's why it's called rosary. <laughs> it's actually a rose, right? It comes from there. It's the offering. It's like a rose offering to Our Lady. So let's try to pray the rosary a lot better today. That would be one very nice gift. Another one would be, well, to try to pray all the other devotions to Our Lady extraordinarily well today. Like the angelus, right? So the angelus, we can do that too. Okay. And you know what? Our Lady is not only... A spiritual being for us. Our Lady is very concrete, very real, right? And that's why we have her all over the house, all over, you know, pictures all over the house, statues all over the house. What about picking out a rose in our garden okay? and actually making a physical manifestation of that affection to Our Lady by putting a rose in one of her statues around the house or her, her pictures? Okay? So, See, this, even the physical uh, actions and behavioral manifestations of our love for God and, her, and His saints is a very good help uh, to, to, to enhance our devotion. So, let's try to think of a gift for Our Lady. Okay? Maybe, maybe also think of some virtues that you need to improve on, which Our Lady exemplified in her life. Maybe there are some virtues that you want to gain a little bit more mastery on. And maybe Our Lady can, can help you. So today, why don't you put an extra effort living up to that virtue? Trying to practice that virtue a little bit better today. And make that your offering to Our Lady. Okay? So there are plenty of ideas around these things. Okay, folks, we got to go. We have a mass to catch. Okay, have a good day, everybody. Happy birthday, Our Lady. Bye-bye.